So good afternoon. My name is Lowell Ruben Vaughn. I am the manager of government relations. On behalf of the city of Brampton, I want to welcome all of you here today at Council Chambers, as well as all of those joining us online via Facebook Live. We are happy to have Mayor Patrick Brown, Regional Councillor Santos, Regional Councillor Vicente, Regional Councillor Pileshi, along with Joseph Batari, the city's interim chief administration officer with us today to hear your questions and comments. Before we begin, I just wanted to give a little bit of the rules of engagement for today. We are going to begin with opening remarks by the mayor, followed by a short presentation about the regional government review process. Then we will hear what's most important from you. We're going to start by those who registered previously to speak here today. And then this will be followed by those comments that receive either through Facebook Live and from others in the audience here today. As a point of reference, the town hall is scheduled to end at 5 p.m. Also, we have an online survey on the city's website that is open until May 13th. You can access it via going to brampton.ca slash regional government, regional government review. There are also printed copies for those of you who are here in person that you can fill out at the front desk. A little bit about the regional government review. Earlier this year, the province of Ontario began reviewing regional governments to ensure municipal and regional governments are working as effectively and efficiently as possible and can continue to provide the vital services that communities depend on. Brampton is one of three municipalities within the region appeal and the options that the city is discussing is whether we split, merge or stay with the region appeal. We'll get into a bit more details in a few minutes. Today's town hall is just one more way that Bramptonians are engaging with residents about your views on this important subject and to answer any questions you may have. At this point, I would now like to invite Mayor Brown to address the audience. Uh, thank you, uh, and uh, thank you uh, to uh, Councillor Juana Santos uh, for uh, joining us, uh, Councillor Paul Vicente, Councillor Michael Pleshi, and our CEO, uh, Joseph Frateri. Um, this is an important conversation we're having uh, and a little bit of background on this. Uh, Premier Doug Ford uh, earlier um, this year announced that he was doing a review of regional governments uh, across the province of Ontario. Not just the region of Peel, uh, but regions uh, across Ontario. Uh, as you know, a similar exercise happened in the mid-1990s uh, when then Premier Harris did a review of municipal governance that ultimately led to some uh, mega cities. Uh, a, similar a similar process went underway in Quebec that actually led to mega cities and then led to those mega cities breaking up. We're not sure the direction the province is going to uh, go, but we believe it's important uh, given the fact that we're supposed to give our feedback uh, by May 21st, uh, that when we give our feedback to the province, it's rooted on what the citizens have said. Ultimately, we were elected in October, but this council has uh, a pretty um, dedicated principle that uh, we want to engage uh, with the public when big decisions happen. Uh, we've had a teletown hall on this topic as well. Um, thanks to the, the marvel of modern technology, we had a teletown hall that had 5,000 people uh, participate. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure not only would we have a teletown hall, not only would we reach out for online correspondence, uh, that we'd actually have an old-fashioned in-person town hall for all, for all those that wanted to uh, participate. And we realize this is in the middle of your weekend, but I want to thank you for being here um, and taking uh, an active interest in your local uh, democracy. The Region Appeal was created in 1974 by a Bramptonian, actually, uh, by former Premier Bill Davis. At the time, Bill Davis thought it was important uh, when it comes to the cost of certain services that we pool those costs to protect the interest of taxpayers. Now, I'm a little biased on this because I am a, a, a huge fan of, of former Premier Bill Davis and um, felt that there was a lot of wisdom to what he uh, undertook. But it's always important to be reflective and to look at how we can better serve um, constituents. And that's why we don't mind this process, because it makes us take a hard look at our operations and make sure that we're really putting taxpayers first. 
to give you a little bit of information on the research that's been done so far, Mississauga did a financial analysis in 2003, and so some of the numbers that they've been using in the public are a bit dated. Uh, uh, the region of Peel certainly looked very different in 2003. There is a more recent report done by Deloitte, which was done in early 2019, um, and that's the most recent data we have. The report from Deloitte um, really uh, highlighted that Mississauga's numbers were uh, flawed and that it would actually cost taxpayers more in Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. It actually said pretty clearly it would result in significant tax increases in Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. So it wouldn't be a hardship for one municipality, it would be a hardship for all three municipalities that are part of the region appeal. On, on their estimates, on Deloitte, uh, um, which is an expert in these type of financial configurations, under the Deloitte analysis, the dissolution would cost taxpayers an additional $1 billion over 10 years and a megacity an additional $600 million over 10 years. You may ask why it would cost more. One of the benefits of the region appeal is that we share some services. Uh, we share the cost of services like the water treatment center. That water treatment center down in Lake Ontario, Mississauga, Brampton taxpayers have helped build. Uh, your taxpayer dollars have gone into the construction of that uh, facility, and water treatment isn't cheap. We've got a state-of-the-art facility that's one of the best in the country, and your taxes have helped build that. We've collectively, Caledon, Mississauga, and Brampton, <coughs> built that facility. You look at the, the Peel Police. We've invested a lot into having um, a modern uh, police force, uh, and the Peel Police is a cost shared by residents in Mississauga, and Brampton. Um, sure, you could have two separate police forces, but you know, I think the original rationale when this was created was that crime doesn't stop at municipal borders, and where there's a pooling of resources, you can uh, have a, a greater impact. Uh, the waste management uh, is done regionally, and so we get a better value by having a larger contract. And that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, when Deloitte looked at the financial analysis. If you're to get rid of the region appeal and have all regional responsibilities paid for individually by municipalities, there would be a significant cost uh, on, on taxpayers. Those who have argued in, um, in favor of the dis dissolution of the region have, in Mississauga, made arguments that they want to be independent. They want to have sole, uh, uh, sole discretion over how those joint funds are managed. <coughs> This is all something to consider. Some people who have argued for a mega city would say it would, a city appeal might give us more clout. There are advantages and disadvantages um, to these different uh, possibilities of an independent Brampton um, without a region appeal, a mega city, or keeping the status quo. Um, so today is really about getting your feedback. I would note we've been joined by uh, Councillor Gurpreet Dillon. Thank you for uh, being here today. Um, and Charmaine Williams is en route uh, as well, uh, another uh, Brampton councillor. Uh, but the focus of today isn't to give you uh, a speech about uh, um, our thoughts. Uh, today is really about listening to you. Uh, we always say uh, around the council table that we have 650,000 bosses, and that's the residents of Brampton, and we want to hear uh, from you, the people that we work for. And so um, we're going to open this up to a discussion. Um, we have some pre-registered questions, and actually, we're going to have Lowell do a presentation on a little bit of the uh, structure behind this, and then we're going to uh, open it up for questions. And so, Lowell, uh, uh, please uh, proceed with uh, a short presentation. Thank you very much, Mayor, and I promise this is not a speech. This will be more on the technical side from what we've learned from the province so far. So as the mayor already said, the uh, province has formally launched its expected review of eight regional governments, Halton, York, Durham, Waterloo, Niagara, Peel, Muskoka District, and Oxford County, as well as the County of Simcoe and all their lower tier municipalities. So this is not just focused on what's happening in the region of Peel. What the province is specifically looking on or looking at are ways to improve the governance structures, reforms to promote better representation and decision making, and ways to improve the quality and hopefully more importantly, to find ways to reduce the costs and overlap of municipal services. 
We understand that recommendations from the special advisors are expected to be delivered to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing sometime in the summer of 2019, and our anticipation is that a decision will follow shortly thereafter. A common question we get um, is who does what? So on the left-hand slide that you'll see um, before you, you'll see some of the services that are provided by the city. So things like arts and culture, bylaw enforcement, transit, fire, recreation, parks, and economic development. These are all services that are delivered by the city of Brampton. On the right side, you will see what the region is responsible for. Areas such as ambulatory services, delivering public health, water, wastewater, uh, waste collection and recycling, along with affordable housing, and support services for social services. And it goes without saying, there are some common or duplicate services at both levels, including planning and development services, as well as some road and road maintenance costs as well. So as the mayor stated, we're really here to look through this um, regional governance review through three lenses. Do you want to keep things the way they are today? Do we want to look at the city of Brampton becoming a single tier municipality, similar to Toronto, Ottawa, London, and Hamilton, which would also include taking on what's currently the regional services? Or do we want to amalgamate, which would mean some different configurations of bringing together the cities of Brampton, Mississauga, and the town of Caledon? The sessions like today is one way to help inform city council's decisions. Another way, and the mayor's already spoke about this, is in the importance of collecting data to ensure that the city's recommendation to the advisors is based on evidence and factual information. This is why in parallel to public engagement and thanks to a motion moved by Mayor Brown and his colleagues at Regional Council, the Chief Administrative Officers and the Chief Financial Officers of all four municipalities, so that's Peel, Brampton, Mississauga and Caledon, are working together to provide an independent financial analysis of the three options that we're talking about today. This analysis will provide a clear picture of the true costs and the impact to municipalities. Having this full study with all partners at the table is important for this process to be fair and transparent to the taxpayers. Given the short window, we do not have this information today. However, we do expect that the analysis will be presented to Regional Council in the coming weeks, and we're hoping to be able to share with our uh, city thereafter. Going into this approach, not only was the financial analysis important, but City Council also wanted to look at this review through a couple of different perspectives. First, is it was important to ensure that there's no reduction in core services that are currently provided by the Region Appeal. Also to ensure that no financial costs, or again, finding those cost efficiencies are found. And then also to ensure fairness to all affected municipalities. So to the last port, and this is again why you're here today, it's how can the city of Brampton and the residents and businesses have their say? There's a couple of opportunities open for you. you. You can have your say directly with the province of Ontario. Next week, the two special advisors who have been appointed, Michael Finn and Ken Sealing, will be at the Region Appeal um, headquarters. If you have had the opportunity to pre-register and you receive confirmation, um, the, the advisors will be listening to questions and comments specifically for the region appeal. They've also opened up an opportunity for you to provide a written submission. Um, you can provide a written submission to regional gov review at ontario.ca, as well as there's an online survey that the province is hosting. I'm not going to read the uh, URL. It's going to be posted to our website. It's here in person, and also I believe it's being posted to uh, Facebook as well. As the mayor said, this is important that the special advisors will be concluding their consultation on May 21st. And lastly, for the City of Brampton portion of the public consultation. There's a number of ways, and we believe that this is something that's going to be iterative, and this is something that's going to potentially be organic, and there may be further opportunities moving forward. First is the in-person town hall and the live streaming of this event today, as well as we're doing an online survey with a number of questions open until May 13th, as well as um, the public can provide comments directly on our website through our online form. To access that, it's brampton.ca slash regional government review. And as the mayor said, we have already hosted one telephone town hall on April 27th. So with saying that, 
Um, now we'll move on to the most important part of this evening, which is hearing from you. Uh, to get things started, we do have a number of residents who have pre-registered to ask questions. So in fairness to them, we're going to be inviting them one by one um, as, they, as we receive them to answer their questions or to ask their questions and the mayor and councillors may wish to um, provide some comments back. Then we will also, at that point, once we've exhausted that list, we'll open it up for other attendees in person as well as the individuals who um, are writing questions through Facebook. So with that, I will turn it over to the mayor. Thank you, um, thank you uh, Lowell. We have some pre-registered questions. And just a reminder, you can ask the questions from the front mic or the one uh, at, the, at the top of the stairs. Um, so we're going to go through the pre-registered questions, and then we'll open it up to the general public. Uh, do we have Masood Khan here? I registered to ask a question. I don't see Masood uh, here. Uh, if he shows up later, we'll get to him. Do we have James Law here? No, James Law. Uh, uh, Sa uh, Sachith Jaya Sundara. Okay, first question. Or comment, or feedback. Doesn't doesn't need to be a question. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I Nice to see everybody here. It's my first time being in the council chambers. It looks very nice. Um, I just had a brief comment for the most part. Um, well, it might be a little political that this, it seems a little like the cover, the provincial government's kind of biased towards our area all of a sudden for some reason. But regarding this review, for certain services like, like ambulance and police and stuff, I think it's better, I think it is the efficient way that we're doing it. I don't see why people who've been here before have been you know, dropped the ball so badly. Um, I just don't like seeing, I like to having the three different cities as well, just because it gives like a nonpartisan uh, political chamber for people to even like engage or gain experience or stuff like that. So I think those opportunities would be uh, gotten rid of if we uh, become like a super city where you don't get to get the reach of like the individual moment. So that's my comment. Don't really have a question, but it's nice to see you. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for the <laughs> feedback. Thank you for being here. Um, Gerline Garcha is Gerline here? Okay. When Gerline comes, we'll get to her. Um, Akin uh, Udentan. Akin. Okay. Um, Karen Jot Batia. recently got an award from the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. Thank you, Mayor, for, um, and city councillors for uh, letting the residents of Brampton, you know, having their say in this uh, very important issue. So my question is to the Mayor, that if the city of uh, Brampton and the region of Peel, you know, if it's split, what will happen to the school board? So will Brampton have its own school board? Uh, because the majority of the student population within these three cities, Brampton, Mississauga, and Caledon, are within the Peel District School Board. So will Brampton have its own school board, or will it, you know, what will happen? Will it stay with the Peel District School Board, or will it create its own? So right now, the school boards are also set by the province, and so they've left no indication they're going to change the geography behind the school boards, but that could be something that flows afterwards. But at this point, the regional review doesn't include uh, the school boards. Okay. And, you know, it also affects our, like, our funding and our resources because currently, you know, we're not getting our, the much funding that we require. The provincial government's cutting our funding. They're, you know, um, they're laying off so many teachers. So our funding's also being impacted. Um, what's your say on that? So I think uh, that's a bit of a, a separate issue, but I know many of us have had concerns about uh, uh, the diminishment of, um, provincial funding. Uh, some of us around this table are regional councillors uh, and we learned about the effects of the public health cuts uh, in Peel wide. It, uh, just like the city of Toronto is facing that, uh, um, it, it is a significant cost here in Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon. Um, a number of us attended the rally um, in terms of the cuts to uh, education. Um, I know Councillor Dillon was at one last week. Uh, Councillor uh, Williams was at one in her area, and I know I attended and spoke at one with Councillor Vicente and Santos uh, at uh, um, at Brampton City Hall. The 300 teachers who are who are losing um, 
and there was one today as well. And so uh, we have a lot of concern about the diminishment of provincial funding to key services. Um, but I would say this review is focused on regional governance, not on um, uh, cuts to uh, provincial funding. Uh, that's a, a separate battle. Uh, right now, we just want to get input from the citizens on other three scenarios being analyzed by the province. Yeah. A, a keeping the status quo, a mega city, or an independent branch within a region appeal, um, what what this what your preference would be? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Council. Um, Satvinder Bat Batia. So thank you, Mayor, for organizing this. Uh, we definitely need such a kind of session over here. Uh, Mississauga has already organized this kind of session. So uh, before a resident could say anything, it's most important that we know what are the implications. Implications in terms of uh, the advantages and disadvantages. So only then we can take a informed and um, proper decision. So um, I don't think so all the residents are aware uh, what could be the implications? Mm -hmm. So at, at this juncture, we first need to know the implications, both uh, which are in favor of Brampton, which could be against Brampton. So uh, good question. And the only analysis there is right now is the Deloitte report. We're doing a subsequent study by Ernst & Young that will be a second opinion on mm -hmm. the Deloitte numbers. But maybe this would be a good time to show you the slide from Deloitte. Uh, I'm going to ask the city clerk to put it on the screen. Um, this was uh, an analysis of the cost uh, under the three uh, scenarios. So as you can see from a, a taxpayer perspective, the status quo is, um, is no additional cost, it's zero. Um, if you look at dissolution, we're looking at about a billion dollar price tag uh, over 10 years. And if you look at amalgamation, it's over $600 million in increased cost. And so this gives you an analysis of what it means for taxpayers in Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. And once again, this was the January 2019 Deloitte report. Mm -hmm. If you've heard of different figures from Mississauga, they did a report in 2003 um, that the Deloitte report said was flawed for many reasons. It essentially said we can continue to share all the services, just not have any oversight over yeah. it, which is keep the region the same but not have any anyone looking at it, So, which is a little bit of a peculiar way of going about it. This is based on um, the hard cost if you were to have a dissolution um, and the hard cost of a mega city and the hard cost of keeping the same. So th this is the most accurate information we have at, have at the moment. What I can see from the graph is that amalgamation, uh, it's the green line and the purple is the one which is for dissolution. So with the dissolution, we'll have a higher tax dollars coming on us. Yes. So that could be one of the implications, but this is just the implication related to the to the just uh, the cost of the tax dollars. But there are other implications in terms of services, uh, and the cost of the split itself will be there. So the way the analysis was done by Deloitte was to look at the same service level. So th so the three scenarios are under the same mm -hmm. service level, um, but you're right. You could always look at whether you want to diminish the service level, but that would be a decision of the new mega city or the new uh, independent uh, municipality, uh, or frankly, you could even look at an enhancement or di di diminishment of service levels under the status quo. One thing which I was thinking, I don't know, but maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a silly question, but we have uh, 25 regional councillors combined together, Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. I believe 11 are from, uh, from Mississauga. So, uh, if Brampton and Caledon have a unity in them, uh, how can they pass a motion of getting separated? So it's not up to the regional council, it's up to the provincial government. Um, and the provincial government is uh, making this uh, decision regardless of what the region appeals uh, recommendation is. They've asked us for input, but we are not the, um, the region appeal is not the decision maker. So Caledon has also done their own homework like this? The Region of uh, Appeal Deloitte report was commissioned by the region, so it was funded by taxpayers in Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
before we get to the next question, we have an online question that uh, um, Lowell just uh, passed my way. Maybe we could uh, read that out. We'll, um, we will bring in uh, online questions throughout this uh, town hall. So um, we can, the first online question was from Hamad Suda. Is it a good or bad thing for us to remain in the region? Well, that's what we're asking your input on. And based on the numbers, we'd love to get your input. What are the disadvantages of the three choices? Well, one is financial. If you look at this chart, there is a financial disadvantage. Uh, who will make the final decision of whether we stay together in the region or not? That's the provincial government. Uh, Premier Doug Ford will be, will be making that uh, decision. Brampton is doing well. Why are we considering a change? Uh, well, that's, uh, uh, this has been instigated not by the city of Brampton, uh, but it's been instigated by the province of Ontario. And trust me, uh, I've said many times, I wish at Queen's Park they were spending time on issues like uh, hallway medicine, gridlock. If someone asked me my top 100 priorities for the provincial government, regional governance review would not be on it. Um, but once again, this is not our choice. This is uh, uh, initiated by the provincial government. Um, we also have a question on how will the review affect Brampton for waste water and wastewater and what is the cost? Um, the water treatment center that has been built is in Mississauga. And so there could be a significant cost on Brampton if Mississauga was to walk away from the financial obligations. And I think this is a good information point and maybe we can get our CEO to jump in here. I haven't given him the heads up, uh, but the, the pipes have been built into Mississauga and because we're a growing community, those regional pipes haven't been expanded to the full extent in Brampton. And so um, it's sort of like agreeing to pay for the cost of dinner and then when the bill comes, running away. Um, and uh, wastewater is an, an interesting component in this conversation because we really have a state-of-the-art facility, but the pipes need to get throughout the region. And because we're a growing community and Mississauga has grown out, it's actually our turn to, to, to really see some of those benefits. And I'm not sure if our CEO wants to add anything into that. I, w I will attempt to. Thank you, Chair. So the, the mayor is absolutely right. Uh, in terms of how the, the, the pipes were planned, uh, they were only taken a certain distance. Um, so there are some complications for Brampton's growth uh, and even more specifically under a dissolution model. Uh, and we're only here considering uh, Brampton, but uh, it would have significant impacts on Caledon as well because that servicing is not, uh, those pipes don't go up into Caledon either. So um, there are some, going to be some challenges and complications looking at how is it we're going to build it out? How is it we're going to allocate those costs? How is it we're going to allocate the, uh, the debt associated to building with th that asset from, from the start? Um, are there any opportunity costs that we need to consider in terms of a dissolution model that allows us to consider if we made this significant investment in Mississauga's growth at the time that they needed it, what, what did that mean for them to grow and evolve to where they are today? And what, what are we losing out on by not having that same kind of support when Brampton needs that continued investment and support under the current model? So those are things that we need to be looking at and Ernst & Young is uh, evaluating further at some of the things we've asked them to look at. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Joe. Another question online was, how will you be dividing fire and police services? Well, fire is already divided. We have the Brampton fire, the Mississauga fire, and so it's already divided. It's not a regional service. How will you divide police services? Well, um, right now the police headquarters is in Mississauga. Um, in no world would we accept having a police headquarters in a different municipality. Um, there's already, in my opinion, um, a bit of a Mississauga uh, focus. Uh, uh, we would want a Brampton focus. And so if you dissolve the region of, of Peel, it would really be um, uh, changing uh, what was a uh, uh, a fair agreement before, and I, I can't imagine a scenario where an independent municipality would have a separate, would have their police force in a, in a, in a different municipality. Um, and so it, it would really cause problems with continuing the existing uh, Peel police. Um, how will the review outcome affect your property taxes? Well, we have that screen still up. Uh, it would, dissolution would be a billion dollars in new taxes over 10 years, a mega city, 600 million in new taxes, um, and so it would cause your taxes to go up. Thank you for those online questions. And 
Uh, please continue asking questions online. I know this is on Facebook Live, and we welcome input whether you're here in person or in your uh, living room. Our next question is Sylvia Roberts, who has one of the best attendance records, I'd say, in the city. When it comes I, to I city do council. have a reasonable okay. attendance record. For the water and wastewater, aren't those largely funded by development charges, which is why the regional government was having panic attacks when the, the provincial government was looking at, why don't we look at getting rid of uh, wait, water DCs? Isn't that where they're largely funded from? So development charges do pay for uh, a number of municipal uh, services, um, but frankly, if there was ever a notion that we were going to divide, we would have had that water treatment plant <coughs> in, in Brampton. It's, mm -hmm. it's a bit hard to move that kind of stuff away from where your outlet is. Um, so the, I found that the reason why Mississauga does not want to divide the water is, as you'll remember, the region proposed substantially increasing water rates, I believe it was at 6% or something like that. Not quite remember, sure on the numbers, but you, it, is it reasonable to remember that they were proposing them going up above inflation? So the reason for that is because Mississauga's pipes are built out. They're not building new pipes. All the new pipe in the ground is going to be replaced, is going to be from replacement, and that's expensive. Most of Brampton's infrastructure is new because most of the city was built in the last 20 years effectively. So those new pipes, the water rates they're paying, are going to help pay for the maintenance and rebuilding of pipes in Mississauga. That's why they don't want to split it. So in terms of water rates, if you actually split it up and you had one body doing the water with it selling the water to two different water uh, utilities, what would happen is Brampton's rates would go down and Mississauga's rates would skyrocket. The reason why they seem to want to do this and the reason why they seem very desperate is their city government has effectively their uh, the city government has effectively come back to the council saying we're out of money we're broke well how does that happen they've deferred so much maintenance that at this point they're spending 96 million dollars to replace infrastructure they should be spending 350 million dollars they are effectively running a quarter billion dollar a year deficit that's why they want to split. They're desperate for any money they can find because they don't want to have to raise property tax by 3% a year for the next two decades. It's important to know when you're negotiating why someone is negotiating something. And the answer is because Mississauga desperately needs the money and that's why they're completely unwilling to look at Brampton getting any share of the regional assets because they don't have the money to actually pay Brampton back. But the problem is if you stay with Mississauga, they're going to try to keep regional rates down as low as possible in order so that they can keep their tax hikes up without the bill going up. But as you remember, the police, for example, they need $400 million in capital costs. And at this regional review, they're like, why do you need $20 million this year for capital costs, which is much less than a tenth of 400 over 10 years? It just... And they're like, well, why can't it be 15? They want to further backload it because they're not thinking about the future. They're desperate to do this so that they don't have to make property taxes skyrocket. At some point, you have to look at a relationship. It's if your spouse has run up 100 grand in credit card debt from gambling, are you sure you don't want to leave? Or, I mean, yes, you put a lot of work into the relationship, but at some point, you have to cut your losses. Okay, and so uh, which, which scenario would you prefer of the three? Well, between Mississauga doing this because they have an enormous amount of money that they're probably going to try to put on the region if we stay, and Caledon seems to think the region's going to build us a monorail for transit. It, it, I, I'm literally not kidding. They act, the mayor actually suggested that on how do you build a transit system in Caledon because they wanted it, the mayor actually suggested a monorail because Disneyland does it and it's cheap and efficient. This is insane. You've got one person who is, I have no idea what Kaladin's thinking about a monorail and Mississauga's broke. Do you want to stay with them? I'm not sure the answer is, I'm not sure it's good for Brampton to stay. And we don't know how Mississauga's reactions are going to go on that because the region didn't go, did the regional review go over Mississauga's city books or did it go over just the region's books? Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Sylvia. Our next question, we have a registered uh, Siva Sivanantan. 
Is Siva here? Yeah, well, we can. Whenever you're ready, um, you can. We can get back to you. Um, so now we're op open questions. Does anyone in the audience want to ask a question or make a comment? Uh, uh, we're taking note of all the responses so that we can share it um, with uh, the provincial government. Um, so uh, state your name uh, and uh, and if you're a Brampton resident, uh, and then we'll uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Yeah, so my name is uh, Curtis Strant. I have um, been a resident of Brampton for over 30 years. I uh, did my schooling here, uh, did, went to college here, high school here. So I've seen the growth of the city. Um, I've seen the, the, the benefits and I've seen, and I've reviewed the, the Deloitte report. The first thing I want to say about the report is um, if, if, if Brampton was a part of the original report, I just want to see why would we want to do another report. That would be just a question I want to ask. If Brampton was consulted with the Deloitte report, you know, why would we want to spend the money again to do another report, which is going to, because it's the same books they're going to look at. It's not going to be different books. Is there a different scope that they're going to assess? Or It was, it was really to satisfy uh, Mississauga. When the Deloitte report came out, it really um, called into question everything Mississauga had been saying. The report specifically said the numbers that Mississauga were using, which were dated from 2003, uh, were false. Uh, and so Mississauga, having their entire argument um, essentially uh, uh, demolished by the Deloitte report, wanted um, a second opinion. And uh, now we've had the CEOs from the three municipalities and the region of Peel agree on a term of reference. And we hope um, this will cause us to use one set of numbers. Um, you can have a reasonable conversation when you agree on the baseline. Um, but you're right, I suspect the Ernst & Young report may have similar findings to the Deloitte report. Uh, but this was really at the instance of Mississauga, who were uh, shocked by the findings of, of cost um, associated with their desired goal. Okay. So that's good. So from just to record, uh, I've always believed in a stronger Brampton and a stronger region. And uh, with that, I just want to say I, I'm supporting you know, us staying with the, with the, with the, with the regional appeal. Um, but I don't want to, I want to suggest that with the mindset that our youth programs won't be affected by it, you know, um, also our seniors, uh, citizens programs will not be affected and also want to keep our city safe. Mm -hmm. So I also believe that we, there, there, there are possibilities for maybe some efficiencies that we could build into the system to make some improvements. Um, so I think if we can make those improvements, I don't think there's a reason why we couldn't, why we, we shouldn't stay, but at the same time we should uh, look for opportunities for improvements uh, on costs, but at the same time don't cut our, our service any further. That's what I, that's what we might be thinking on. Good. And, and to say that we want to keep the status quo yeah. doesn't preclude improving uh, right. uh, the, the region. And so I think that's an important thing to consider as well. Uh, efficiencies um, and a better functioning uh, region is something that I think would be desired if the status quo were, were to continue. Right. I know one of my grievances and this council's grievances has been a representation. Yeah. Mississauga has 11 votes on regional council and we have uh, seven, despite the fact that Brampton is almost the same size as Mississauga now, despite the fact that Brampton will surpass Mississauga in size because their population has stagnated and Brampton's population is still uh, increasing at a rapid uh, rate. So imagine when we get into a scenario where Brampton has a larger population but doesn't have the same representation. And so, if anything, one of the grievances should be coming from Brampton that we don't have representation by population. Well, let us know what we can do yeah. to improve on us yeah. so we can get more representation. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time, and I really appreciate yeah. you putting this uh, town hall okay. together. Thank you. Sir? My name is Bill Dollahan. I've known Brampton since 1960. I've lived here since 1975. And there is a door that has not been opened, and I don't know why, and it has to do with the Constitution. You know, you're talking about maybe Peel region is dated. Well, maybe the Constitution is dated because it gives the province powers to over municipalities, over people who live in places and they have no concern about those people who live there. They don't have to. They're aloof. They're different. They're far. So, uh, you know, I just want to say I wish someone never did. No one opened it during the great kerfuffle with the formation of the GTA, 
No one opened it with the great kerfuffle about the reduction of the Toronto City Council from 50 or 25. You know, it, there were challenges, but they got nowhere because of the Constitution. And again, here we are with the province waving its power over municipalities, large cities. That is not suitable anymore. I lived in Chicago. Chicago got a charter which exempted it from the laws of the state. I haven't heard of such a thing in Canada. Toronto should have a charter, and then it wouldn't be overruled by Ontario every time it turns around. And this is what's going on. We have a province that has too much power over too many large cities. And I wish someone would open the door on the Constitution. I know it's not easy to change that, but uh, it is something that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the input. Any uh, advice on the three scenarios being analyzed? We should stay as we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, the question was about um, uh, whether there should be a constitutional challenge. Um, I would note uh, that uh, um, big city mayors uh, for a long time have argued that there should be three levels of government, not uh, the current arrangement where municipalities, according to the constitution, are creatures of the province. And so a province can have a legal battle with um, the federal government and you, you're not sure who's going to win that legal battle. But because municipality is not an official order of government, rather they are creatures under the constitution, it diminishes the legal power of municipalities. I would note that during the uh, current premier's um, uh, intervention in Toronto, it, the city did take the province to court uh, and attempted to do a constitutional challenge. Um, what ended up happening is the premier, uh, in 1982 when the constitution was amended, they gave the provinces a power called the notwithstanding clause, which means they could override the courts if uh, they so desired. The premier was so um, determined on his intervention in the city of Toronto, he actually applied the notwithstanding clause, which is only meant for national emergencies. That was the original uh, creation of that clause. In the end, Despite the threat that he was going to use it, he did not have to use the notwithstanding clause because the courts ultimately ruled that his changes and intervention in Toronto were constitutional, that it's within the constitution, municipalities are creatures of, of the province. There were some hopes uh, at the time, there was pleas to the prime minister to intervene um, and to maybe change the constitution that would not allow this to happen. Um, and the prime minister at the time said, um, he was not interested at this time in changing the constitution. Uh, and so it is, municipalities cannot initiate a change to the constitution. It happens at the first minister's table and requires seven of 10 provinces to agree representing over 50% of the Canadian population. And so would I love for the constitution to recognize municipalities? Of course, but it, I would just warn it is a, a difficult process. And as we've seen in past attempts to change the constitution, uh, other issues tend to uh, get interjected, making it very difficult. The last two attempts to change the Canadian Constitution under then Prime Minister Maroney uh, were unsuccessful. It initiated on one topic and then everyone else, every other province brought in their grievances and it became a very difficult, arduous process that ultimately was unsuccessful. Um, but it's important to look at this from every perspective and see what angles we have as municipalities to protect our interests. And so I, I appreciate the, the feedback. Um, Anyone else with a question? Oh, we got two Facebook questions. Um, how would taxes increase for the average household in dissolution? Well, the answer, it would increase significantly, a billion dollars over, over 10 years. A billion dollars, and uh, you can't look at it per resident. You'd really have to look at it per household. And per household, you're looking at a pretty significant cost. If Brampton were to split from the region, how long, how, how long would that take to implement? Well, as we've seen what happened in the city of Toronto, the province uh, put in their changes mid-election. So in a, in a span of almost two months, the change happened. And so normally it would happen over a number of years. That's what happened in the mid-1990s, but it is legal for the changes to happen rapidly as well. Ultimately, the timeline would be set by the province of Ontario. So those were the two online questions. And once again, we encourage you to Put in your questions and we'll answer them to the best of our abilities or simply share with us your opinion. We're keeping track of all the, all the input we're getting so we can include this in our submission to the province of Ontario. 
Um, next question. Is there a member of the audience that would like to come forward? Come on forward. And if you want the next question, you can line up uh, behind and we can uh, get all the questions in. Oh, hi. Oh, my name is uh, Dallas Conley. And my question is, uh, back in 1974, this, uh, Brampton and Bramley merged. So do you think, and you see how that has made the city of Brampton, that merger, do you think if all three cities merged, how the, in 50 years, how different it can be, like all three cities together, how big a powerhouse it can become? So for advocates of a mega city, that's one of the arguments they make is that it would make it would make the city appeal the third largest city in Canada, only behind Montreal and Toronto. And with Montreal's growth rate stagnated, Peel would end up the second largest city in Canada in a, in a short period. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages, and that's one of the uh, people that have advocated for a mega city. That's one of the uh, advantages they've articulated. So uh, would you like us to put you down under that category? Yeah. Okay. I thank you. Well, thank you for being here. And I would note it is National Youth Week um, that Councillor Santos uh, uh, highlighted this week at around the council table. And so it's great to have young people involved in this discussion as well. Frankly, the decision that is made on regional governance will affect you more than anyone else. And I applaud any young person that comes forward to participate. Um, next question. Mr. Mayor, council, um, members of the public. Firstly, I'd like to just give a little bit of recognition to a Brampton entrepreneur, um, be minded. So Brampton proud um, is something that I believe in and I think keeping Brampton and its distinct identity is important. Um, but also as a business owner, I think there are efficiencies that can be sought. So this is uh, something that's important. I think this is an exercise that hopefully council can uh, get some answers. Uh, similar to the gentleman had said, there are a lot of questions uh, that need to be answered. Um, from my perspective, a lot of times there is duplication. Anyone that has dealt with city and regional issues, um, in particular um, certain departments, there could be efficiencies that could be sought. Um, and I think most people that have actually uh, experienced that, we could have amalgamation of departments Perhaps uh, that's something to, to consider. Uh, but the identity of um, all these cities and the town, uh, I think, is important to maintain. So how we um, grow and sustain uh, good growth and efficiencies, I think, needs to be also considered um, just as important is maintaining that identity and the culture that we've established over hundreds of years. So for me, I think the, the uh, disillusion is respectfully silly. I think that does not work, that separation. Uh, anyone that has uh, unfortunately gone through a divorce realizes there's a cost to that. And, and, and I do applaud uh, Mr. Mayor and Council for recognizing that, is that that billion dollar plus um, if they so choose to want to split, uh, I think that they'll have to uh, respectfully pay for that split uh, through the courts. Uh, even, if, even if the province chooses to go that direction, I think that's something that uh, would be muddied up in courts for decades to come because there are costs that have been borne by our taxpayers uh, over 30 years as they have grown, as has been, has been said. So, Anyway, for me, it's, it, it's, it's staying as is or an amalgamation hybrid. Uh, I think that's something to, to, to consider, that there are efficiencies that can be sought, but our culture and our identity are important to be maintained. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, thank you, Mario, for your feedback. I would just note uh, that Councillor Santos uh, passed me uh, a note which said uh, uh, to remind uh, residents that uh, in terms of finding efficiencies, um, in December, this council voted for a value for money uh, review uh, being done by KPMG and a core uh, services uh, delivery review. And so looking for those efficiencies on a municipal level, we are already uh, full steam into that uh, review. On a regional level, in terms of 
duplication of departments like planning, that's something that could be looked at if you're looking at efficiencies under the status quo. HR, finance, all those types of departments that, okay. I mean, are looking at similar things throughout the city. So we'll put you down in the category of the status quo, but looking for efficiencies. Uh, and Councillor Santos wants to add a, a word in. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to highlight, I'm not sure if um, folks in the audience uh, noticed today, but we were recognized in the city of Brampton as being one of the best places to live in the country. Okay, so yeah, for sure. So when it comes to our identity as a city, certainly we are carving a niche for ourselves. Good point. And an interesting aspect of that article uh, is it talked about some of the attributes of Brampton. Sometimes when, when you live in a city, you don't necessarily realize some of the advantages you have, but they looked at things like a variety in culinary options or the proximity of recreation. And as someone who's traveled to every community in Ontario, I can tell you uh, we are very lucky in terms of uh, the great choices we have. Uh, no one can ever say Brampton is a boring city. Uh, Brampton is uh, vibrant. Brampton is diverse. Brampton is the world within a small area. And so there are uh, things we're very proud of. And that's why I always love seeing those Brampton proud uh, t-shirts. So um, why don't we uh, take our next question? Well, uh, I just want to say thank you to the mayor and members of council for having uh, this consultation um, today. I think there's also another aspect of it that is probably on the top of everybody's minds. And just for the record, we'll note that this is Cody Vatcher. Cody Vatcher. I didn't think I would need an introduction, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> um, sorry for being a little bit full of myself there, but sometimes you got to. Um, Think of the social services that would be impacted. Think of you know affordable housing. Think of children's aid. That is something that you know I've been the personal beneficiary of. Think of all of the social services, um, not just you know the taxes that are going to skyrocket, um, the services that would decline, um, but the access to social services that could ruin people's lives. And I wish that the Premier, um, and if he was listening today, um, I would ask him to, uh, to just take that into account. You know, he said he, he was for the people, and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really seem that way anymore. So uh, I'm for keeping everything the same. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Cody. We'll put you down in that uh, category. I'll note uh, Councillor Harkirat Singh is uh, uh, with us uh, here as well uh, today. Thank you, Harkirat. Um, next question. Oh, we've got an online question. Oh, from the Telephone Town Hall. Um, Brampton has high insurance rates. Will this change our structure? <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, insurance rates are set by the province of Ontario, uh, and uh, there was a proposal um, to end geographical discrimination in insurance rates. Um, the province is saying they're entertaining it. Um, what it allows insurance companies to do is to charge more based on where people live in their postal code. Uh, in Brampton, we've always felt that that's not fair, that uh, the insurance companies have said they need to uh, charge more when there's fraud, well, frankly, that's their responsibility to ha have their own fraud departments, not the easy route where you just charge everyone more. Um, we've long advocated uh, that the loophole for insurance companies to charge more based on the postal code is wrong, and we're hopeful that the province is now saying that this is being reviewed. Two MPPs, Parm Gill and Garatan Singh, have had put forward bills to this effect and the government is saying that it's going to be changed. It was signaled again in the budget that it's going to be changed, and we are watching carefully in hope that it will change. Um, whose idea was it to break up? What does Brampton Council feel about it? Well, the review was initiated by the province, and Brampton Council, I think, has significant reservations, but we're waiting for the public's input before we make a formal submission. How would a megacity be governed? Why well, it would be an election uh, by council, and the structure would be created by uh, the province. Is it true that Mississauga would owe us if they split? Uh, we're looking into getting a, a legal opinion,
but based on our contributions, I feel very strongly that Mississauga would have a significant debt to the city of Brampton. And once we have a legal analysis, we'll share that with the public as well. Those were the questions from our telephone town hall we weren't able to get to um, on that town hall that was uh, widely attended. Um, oh. And we're going to put a summary up um, on the on the screen of a summary of the teletown hall feedback for those that weren't able to participate uh, that may want to. Um, are there additional questions? You're welcome to come to uh, the microphone. And if you want to come, just come line up at the microphone and you're welcome to uh, ask your questions. Remember to state your name. Uh, Hi, my name is Harpreet. My question for, for you, Mr. Mayor. Half of the Brampton population is, of course, the woman, the female population. My question is related to the women resources or the community services. As a ground zero, I have personally seen there are so many problems the women faces, like the domestic violence and child abuse, girl child abuse. We need some more resources to help those kind of victims in the society. If we split, what will happen to those women or those girl types? Okay, uh, great, great question. Uh, and obviously this year we've already had two high profile tragedies yes. um, that were involved in cases of domestic violence. Uh, Regional Council added 55 new police officers this year to the Peel um, Region Police Force in hopes that we can have faster response times and um, respond um, with severity to those that uh, uh, breach our collective uh, sense of uh, safety. Um, if you split um, and have two police forces, um, that's two chiefs, two managements. Uh, it could ultimately lead to less funds for frontline police, uh, policing. And so I think there are concerns on a policing front of what it would mean for the region of Peel. Um, but those are, that's part of the conversation we're, we're having today on why we want to get uh, your feedback. And uh, it's, it's just my suggestion that we have a separate uh, uh, line or uh, a public line for the women helpline so that you know women can in, in need can talk freely uh, to the city or uh, mm -hmm. people and you know um, so, uh, solve their problems okay um, that's the, that, that's a good feedback and uh, I appreciate you raising and that. we need more social workers you know who goes to their houses and um, relate to their problems and solve their problems because the ground reality is very severe. You know, women always um, uh, face the problems in a silence and feel the pain and, you know, no one is there to solve their problem. And you know, one thing that we've advocated as a region is we don't get our fair share when it comes to social services. If you look at the per capita funding, we are the most underfunded in the province of Ontario uh, and uh, it's why um, we've been Regional Council now for a number of years has been making their fair share envelope for social services um, a, a real advocacy point for, for the region. Ultimately, the local MPPs um, get to uh, set uh, that budget. And if you have an opportunity, if you're concerned about social services and the level we have in Peel, make sure to raise that with your uh, local MPP as something sure. that you'd like them to advocate for. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank so you. much. Next question. Okay, well, um, I was just gonna say, uh, there's a Chinese proverb that I've learned that says, when the lips are gone, the teeth are exposed to the cold. And the reason why I say that is because the Brampton, from the way I'm looking at it, if it was to merge, it's still, and become a part of the city of Peel, it's still vulnerable to some of the risks that I've seen in Toronto, where you almost have like what I call an indirect, nice redlining Canadian style, where certain vulnerable parts of Toronto are neglected while downtown Toronto got more support, and that is the danger to Brampton. Once again, if we were to go the other way and separate without a plan that you said, it would be more expensive. That is something that sticks in my mind because the question that I have to ask is, 
yes, uh, Mrs. Saga said they want to separate, but I'm wondering if they want to separate from what I call those people, and those people are people, I'm one of those people indirectly, because Brampton is very diverse, right? And that is something that is also sticking in my head, because I, I've lived in the United States as well, and I've seen what happens when cities say, oh, we don't want to really work with those people, and then they separate, and guess what? That's where you create all those problems and all those ghettos, and in people's minds, that's a nice coded word for saying people looking like me and some of the counselors here. And uh, that's why, I, personally, I think <laughs> that, yes, uh, it has been mentioned, we do need to find efficiency, then we can. And that is the advantage of our diversity in and of itself, that we can leverage our people in unique ways that compared to um, as the United States when they were complaining about people that come from, uh, since there's young people here, asshole countries, while they're saying that they come from the asshole countries while they're indirectly turning their country into one. We don't want to turn our province into one and we don't want our city to turn into one because we have the, with new leadership and everything, we have the ability to uh, turn our city into an example of what great minds and collaboration you know, when great minds come together, we could see beautiful things happen. That's just what I want to say. So I'm for a stay, staying put and building on what we have with our unique character. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, while I'm very grateful to the previous mayors and councils, we needed the change and we are, the fate befell on US shouldn't befall on our Ontario special state. And uh, we see that very unfortunately, we are not having the support, a city like Brampton or other cities similar, not having that. Uh, very unfortunately, uh, how, you know, there are noticeable, uh, I have, been living in this city for 35 years. I have business last 22 years, employees working, and four of my children had gone to elementary school, middle school, high school, and worked in the city and then moved out, some of them. So we have seen what is happening. And I'll, I'll, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for your good service and noticeable. I'm not flattering you all. If that something is bad, I'm the first person to voice that. Uh, having said that, um, parents, uh, you know, why should we, we like to remain and improve our uh, services and uh, help to the people from university that has been deprived lately. Hospital is getting delayed. Everything has been controlled by, you know, the rest. When we have the ammunition, when we have the help right here, why we can improve with the resources that we have. And uh, parents are helpless, hopeless, powerless with their mental health. You know, we need to address our youth. Education is the most important than anything else. And we should understand. You see, parents need to know we can, instead of looking for everybody is stressed out. What are you stressed about? May I just said that we have everything right here in the city. We need to educate the children. Where do you go? What do you do? Whom do you relate to? They, are, they don't know what to do, when to do, where to do, how to connect. Probably we have the resources, but they don't know where to get the resources, how to get the resources. That education needs to be simplified and given to the, you know, the citizens. That just need to be. In the past, that's what didn't happen. At least now we have an efficient team. We could execute all that, you know? Every house is, you know, you come here, oh, I'm, I'm unable to do that, I'm unable to do this. Where does it start, home front? If you can repair the home front, the whole front will be fine. You know, this is, whether it's an immigrant or people who are here, same situation. And go to downtown Brampton, high density development, we, Lately, there are some actions taking place. You go to uh, Nelson Street and George Street, that corner. You know, people feel very uncomfortable when they get down from the bus. You know, it, what, what are we representing? 
what, what, why have we not addressed this? Of course, there are something being done. We know, go train, station. When people feel, come there, feel that safety, you know. And all these things can be, we can remain, we have the resources. I personally think we, uh, we needed that boosting, which we have got right now. We should not be controlled by if Mayor can go out and wrote all these good stuff recently, and you guys know that, and we can still continue to do that. And the Brontonians are never scared. I've seen in 35 years, tough times do not last, tough people do, and they have lasted long. And we should be proud to be Brontonians. And thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Council. Okay, as Siva, so should we put you down then for continuing the region appeal? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, we have another online question uh, from uh, Nina Chopra. Previous years we saw that Bramp Brampton's development is way behind that of Mississauga's development. If all three cities merge to a single city, we predict that all three cities would get equal funds of development. Let's merge and make the biggest and strong city. So that's a, a feedback from uh, Nina that we get more uh, development. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay. Questions or feedback? Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, firstly, uh, I, maybe I'm the only one for the solution so far. Yeah, my, and let me explain my reasons. Uh, but my reasons is uh, based on that Mississauga is bigger than Brampton in terms of population, right? Is that right, sir? Mississauga currently is bigger than Brampton in population. Right. So in terms of services, because we have less population, our cost of services will be a lot lower than Mississauga. Right? Right. That's my reasoning. Because if we're looking at efficiencies, we will be saving more if we operate our own, except for the police services and the regional roads. If all the services will be downloaded to our own, we can save more instead of contributing to the pill because we have lesser population. So ambulatory services, housing services, public services, we all go down because we have lesser population. Right? So the forecast is Brampton's population will surpass Mississauga's and the regional infrastructure that's been built is built where the population is at the time. So we've already paid for the regional infrastructure in Mississauga because they're built out. Now it's the region's turn to pay for that same infrastructure in Brampton. And so the, the cost of paying for that services right now, uh, it's Brampton for years contributed to subsidizing the infrastructure in Mississauga. And now it's Mississauga's turn um, for regional roads and uh, water and pipe maintenance. Uh, yeah, in, in I Brampton. agree with that. So they still will repay us once we dissolve. No. No? Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's another yeah. problem there because efficiency yeah. will be there more for us because we're smaller. Mm -hmm. That's my argument. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking they will still have to, because they will subsidize them before they have to sub subsidize us now, mm -hmm. right? So that's my thinking. And my, that reason I'm for the solution is because they want to split, so let them split. Why would you live with somebody who doesn't want to live with you? Mm -hmm. That's the second reason. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Are there any other additional questions? Oh, we have another online question. Why is this decision being made now and not before the next municipal election? Uh, the timetable is set by the province of Ontario. Um, this is initiated uh, by uh, the government of, of Premier Ford. Uh, it is not the timelines and the initiation of this process. Um, it wasn't started uh, locally. Yes. Omer, uh, so my question is that uh, the region of Peel has been, you know, it was founded uh, around 40 years ago. At that time, they didn't, uh, Mississauga didn't have a problem. Uh, now, why is it now that they have a problem? Why is it that before everything was going fine, all the three cities were okay, they were all happy? Why is it now that Mississauga specifically has a problem of going out. And I know that if we, 
if we are divided, Brampton is capable enough of going forward. We have a, a great city council. We have a great mayor. And you also mentioned that, you know, Brampton's population is going up. Every day, new immigrants are coming. The, the federal government's not putting any stop to this. They, and everybody wants to come to Brampton. They are, they are not putting uh, the immigrants, they're not putting them into other cities. Everybody wants to come to Brampton. Why? And why is Mississauga, you know, taking this decision now? If it wanted to, it could have done that in the 40 years. I think 40 years ago, uh, the logic was Brampton residents would help build infrastructure in Mississauga. But now that it's their turn to help subsidize infrastructure in Brampton, uh, it sparked a, a change in heart. Uh, I think Councillor Pileshi uh, uh, wants to add in uh, a response. And so, Councillor Pileshi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess just being uh, the councillor, one of the regional councillors, uh, and Councillor Medeiros returning, uh, that was at the region <clears throat> well, the previous four years, it, this isn't anything new. Mississauga has always wanted to kind of uh, uh, go it alone. Um, and then, uh, so so just to, to reference the, your one question there, but on the, on the next one about our population, um, so the province dictates to the region how much uh, uh, the region appeal is going to grow. Uh, the region then determines who's going to take that population. Mississauga has um, obviously the majority of the vote at, at the region um, and Brampton was therefore, the Brampton therefore took the majority of that population with the assumption that one day, um, you know, growth coming from the south uh, and that's typically the way we plan uh, development in, uh, in communities, um, would eventually catch up to, to Brampton with the ratio of uh, uh, employment to residential. So just to, uh, to talk a little bit about your, about your question regarding the population. And uh, one quick question, the last question that I have, is that we did so much joint infrastructure with uh, Mississauga, uh, and you know, our resources are limited. We're not getting enough uh, resources from the province. So with the high raise of population, you know, what, uh, we, don't, we don't have that many resources. What are we going to do? Because, uh, what are we going to do? We did so much infrastructure, will we get our money back? And why don't we have that much resources? In? And it's one of the reasons we'd be doing a, uh, getting a legal opinion to show that uh, Brampton wants to protect its uh, position. Um, I see we also have a councillor, Dylan, that wanted to add in um, a perspective as well. Uh, so, councillor Dylan. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, appreciate that, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, really interesting hearing all the questions today, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I have to run soon. So, I appreciate uh, the time you've given just to give some uh, remarks as well. I, I just want to make note that um, if you've been following the situation, you've seen uh, essentially that the municipalities are being pit against one another. I don't. I uh, think that's very healthy. Uh, I think we've had uh, a proud tradition in Peel uh, of working together, and so uh, I'd like to see that continuing going forward. But I think if you've seen uh, the difference between Miss Saga and uh, uh, Brampton, is we've taken an evidence-based uh, approach, and uh, so we haven't taken an official position as they have. We said, let's uh, make the most logical decision, and let's do what's best for the taxpayer at the end of the day. And I think uh, you know we've worked very closely uh, with them. Uh, there was a report out. Uh, to appease them. We're doing a, another report uh, as well. And so uh, we're hoping at the end of the day, uh, Miss Saga residents uh, and Brampton residents uh, don't necessarily put civic pride uh, over uh, or politics, as I think uh, Miss Saga Council has done, over what's best for uh, the residents of Peel, Mississauga, and Brampton. And so uh, I've heard so many uh, really good comments today. Uh, I'm very proud that uh, our residents were able to come out. Uh, and, uh, and I think that the, the middle of this month our comments are due to the province, so hopefully the best uh, decision will be made by then. But uh, I can reassure you this council and our staff uh, have done everything uh, for the best interests of our taxpayer and our residents. And in conclusion, I would like to say that, you know, we should all keep unity. All the three um, city, uh, the region of Peel should be united and that everyone, you know, should... Uh, be united as they were and not split because if we split nobody is nobody's benefit nobody's in benefit we are all in 
any perspective, we are all in loss. So the benefit of the residents, if the council wants, if the regional PO wants to look at from the benefit of the residents, I would strongly recommend them that they should stay united and stay the way they are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Garen Jot. We have a few more questions uh, online. We have Wendy Latell. Who will be making the ultimate decision when the city splits or stays, the people or the province? Uh, the province is making the final um, decision. Um, and we're told that they'll be making that decision by August. And so in terms of timeline, they've said they're going to try to make their decision before a the AMO conference, which is this August. Another online question. Alvin Harris, can the mayor explain the Deloitte report? Why is the cost of amalgamation higher than the status quo? And we had Deloitte present their findings at the region uh, appeal council, and many asked that same question. And they said one of the reasons is we have existing contracts that are for specific municipalities, and so there are costs to canceling contracts. There's also, you know, you've got city of Brampton buses, you've got city of Brampton letterhead, and essentially what you're doing is you're essentially having to change the branding of the entire city. Um, there may be some, uh, not only employment, but contracts that need to be altered. And so um, the estimated cost of early termination um, and of rebranding uh, and, and an assortment of other costs associated with this was $600 million over uh, 10 years. Um, that was the Deloitte report. I would note we're getting a second opinion from Ernst & Young, but I would note originally the mega city in Toronto was supposed to be a cost saving. Afterwards, it ended up costing more. Um, there are sometimes costs that are not anticipated, um, but once again, there are advantages and disadvantages of being a larger city. Our goal here today is not to prejudge the city's input, but to give you an opportunity to share your submissions before we make an official submission to uh, the province. So those were um, additional online comments. Um, are there any other additional questions or comments before we wrap up? Okay. I want to make one more comment to addition to the other two about the accessibility of you know political experience and all that. Um, the, the aspect of the Brampton Proud and their identity. So I'm really for keeping it the way we have it, but after hearing other people talk, I'm also a little inclined if we just separate and have our own city, just because, not gonna lie, but not everybody in Brampton is that proud to be in Brampton. I think there's room for improvement to get people to go out. I personally have been making an effort to go out to events and stuff. Uh, went to the Rose Theater, a great place to check out. Uh, went to a hockey game, Brampton Proud. Pretty sure the Beast Hockey Club will be uh, happy for their plug. Um, but yeah, so even if we separate and not become a major, major city, I think we can do a lot more to uh, promote our Brampton identity in different ways. I'm pretty sure you can think of ways. I don't have any right now, but okay. just another you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come on down. So just have one more, one more uh, point in relation to, I uh, just want to make a note on the uh, insur yep. high insurance. Yep. Sure. I don't want to come back. No, that's okay. I just want to make another point on the high insurance. Uh, from one of our MPPs, one of the, the bill that's going through is uh, Bill 42. So that's, I just wanted to make sure if anybody wants to take a look at that, see what the content of it is, uh, Bill uh, 42 that's going through right now. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Pileshi asked me to remind everyone here uh, today that if you want to have additional input, we have two government MPPs that will be part of the decision-making process for this. And that's Amarjot Sandu and Pravmeet Sakaria. If you want to uh, get them, um, uh, if you have a strong opinion that you want them to hear and pass on to the Premier, you can do that. If you're upset about the way the process is being undertaken, you can let one of the opposition MPPs know so they can raise it uh, in the legislature with Sarah Singh, Kevin Yard, or Garatan Singh. Um, there, there are provincial representatives, and make sure you let them know uh, about your opinions as well. Um, sir, one, one thing I've been wondering about, and, and uh, I figure I want to ask it, is the Deloitte report. Will you tell us how that came about? The way it was reported is it was some doubt about who knew what and who did what mm. to get that report done, and that the mayor of Mississauga was left out in the 
in the cold and not involved. So um, the mayor of Mississauga, I think, was um, uh, a little bit embarrassed by the fact the Deloitte report called into question the figures that Mississauga had been using. Um, it called them flawed uh, and went through an analysis of why those 2003 figures were no longer accurate. The report was commissioned by the regional chair, Nando Yanika. Um, the Mississauga councillors asked if it was within his legal authority to do so. The regional appeal um, uh, lawyer said that it falls within the bylaws that the clerk is, uh, the, the chair is allowed to commission um, a financial analysis. Um, I first learned about it because when Mississauga started going on about numbers, I called the region appeal and I called our offices here in Brampton. I said, share with me any analysis that was done. Um, and so I got uh, all the facts from the city of Brampton and the region appeal. Um, the chair had said at the time that the Mississauga mayor had asked for the report, she would have been given it. It was being provided to anyone that asked. I happened to get it first because I asked first. Um, I thought it was only prudent before I spoke to the media that I gather any financial analysis that was undertaken at either the city of Brampton or the region appeal um, level. Um, the, the mayor of Mississauga was upset that uh, I had received it um, uh, prior to her. So that's the history behind it, and the work was commissioned by uh, the chair of the, of, the, of the region appeal, Nando Yanika, who happens to be a 30-year member of Mississauga City Council. So uh, if anything, he has a long history uh, on the Mississauga side of the equation, but I think he's been equitable and fair as he's uh, um, held the chair position at the region. Hello, my name is Sylvia again. Um, so a gentleman previously brought up a potential constitutional amendment. It was mentioned that you would need seven provinces. And generally that's true, but the constitution specifically includes a clause that allows it so that for a province specific amendment, you only need the province and the federal government to agree. And Toronto is actually pushing for that. So it might seem like it's a long way away to the next provincial election, but drafting a city charter actually takes a substantial amount of time and consultation because it's effectively a city constitution. So if the city decided to move forward and try to make it a constitu to make it a provincial election issue next time, and we wanted to have a charter to be doable within that government's mandate, you would need to start now. It's a case of Toronto has been talking about it for a while and Chicago had been mentioned. Chicago actually spent decades lobbying and created a charter before anyone had said that they would do it and went through extensive public consultation to ensure that when they finally got a chance to implement it, it was what the people wanted and it would work quite well for their city. So that may be worth looking into. Okay, thank you, Sylvia, for the uh, perspective. Um, we have a few more online comments. Um, Vidya Gautam, uh, why not uh, can we make the region of Peel into a mega city of the future? That will solve the cost of dissolution of the region of Peel. The overall cost of the mismanagement of the region of Peel, if any, will evaporate. There will be no additional cost for regional councillors, uh, plus the duplicity of administrative services. Three ministers will be wiped out. How, how cool will the, will the mayor be if he can say he found billions of dollars? That was the impact, input from Vidya. I would note the mega city, based on the Deloitte findings, would cost $600 million more. It would not be a cost saving. So that's a response to that question. Fabio wrote in, would there be a situation where city council, along with the voting public, elect to keep things the way they are? The province would choose to merge or separate the region anyway. There is not um, right now any scheduled referendum to give uh, the people a say. Uh, I suppose uh, that's something that could be looked at if, if we wanted to have our own um, referendum. The province has not given, um, has not said they're open to that. Uh, they want to make the decision, but uh, um, uh, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, additional comments from the Teletown Hall. What will be the future of public health and shelters if we split from the region? A bigger city means bigger and more out of control development. So those were two additional comments from the Teletown Hall. Okay. Um, seeing no more 
questions or feedback, I want to really thank everyone for being here today, for being part uh, of our uh, in-person town hall. Um, to let you know, if you want to share additional in input and you're at home and didn't want to share today or wanted to take some more time to think about it, there are still opportunities. You can go to brampton.ca backslash regional government review and share your opinion. Or you can submit a comment or question at brampton.ca backslash regional government review. All input will be considered and before the city makes our submission on May 21st. At the end of the day, the strongest cities are ones with an en engaged democracy where the citizens are involved. And uh, by virtue of you being here today, it's because you care about your community. And on behalf of City Council, I just want to thank you for taking the time today. Uh, and we will keep the residents of Brampton um, up to date as this, if there's any new developments, whether it's a new financial analysis or any updates from the province. But once again, thank you for being here today and I hope everyone has a great weekend.